going on? I'm Tywin here, bringing you Act 4 Revelations Cyrus Gameplay. This is back at the Vault of Tears, where we got to spend all our time in Infinity Blade 2. Back to Alsar's stronghold, the Vault of Tears. Saranthia. <clears throat> this time we get to go, it is nighttime. Uh, we only get to go to, on one path, just like every other castle, a very linear path, and we get to go towards to the worker or to where the archivist was reading the giant tablet. The giant, the giant slab tablet. It's kind of cool to be back in uh, the Vault of Tears, even if it's just for one mission and at night. Um, it's nice that they incorporated the Infinity Blade 1 castle and the Infinity Blade 2 castle, at least in my opinion. <coughs> I think that's pretty cool. Go ahead and try and let's try and get some unmastered gear here so we can continue to level up. And then we'll head on our way through the vault of gear. on the Fell Siren, one of my least least favorite titans from Infinity Blade 2. I just don't really like fighting her. But she's not too hard anyway and with these with this uh dual weapon here she goes down pretty pretty dang quick. Alright, so all the chests um, that were there in the second game are, are there in this game as well. Get a small key from that first chest still. Just like every uh, every every time you open that chest for the first time, you get a small key in the Infinity Blade 2. So, we got another small key now in Infinity Blade 3 from that same chest. I get to take on a big old titan <clears throat> that is using part of my castle, the savage troll, using part of my castle as his weapon. So we need to beat his face in for that. Maybe. If I dodge right direction. So it's kind of chaotic here at my house right now. You probably are going to be here in the background. College football, my dog barking, and my daughter watching Sophia the First. Which, if you don't know, it's a Disney Channel show about a princess. So, yes, Sophia. So that's all the background noise that you're probably going to be hearing. I don't really care though. Gives you a glimpse into my life on uh, Saturday, which is the day that I am recording this, or that I'm editing this video for you. I have all the footage recorded of the entire playthrough up through the River of Secrets. I'm just editing and commenting for you all to see and I'll upload as that happens. Um, I took a little break from the walkthrough uploads so I could bring you guys the final dragon fight and the um, Ash and Sorrow map. So every now and then, if I find something in the game that I think you guys would, would, would really want to see, then of course I might make that, make that video instead of continuing the walkthrough. But by early next week, sometime, you, I'll have all, I'll have, I'll have all my walkthrough videos uploaded. Then I'll move on to whatever you guys want. Leave in the comment section. Let me know what you guys want. I'll do high, how-to videos on the heavy class, uh, both with Cyrus and Issa. I'll give you tips on beating the bosses. You know, whatever you guys want. I don't know. Give me ideas. 
There's lots of stuff we could do as Infinity Blade is still so new and there's lots to discover. So just give me give me all your ideas. Of course, how to videos are, are going to be good. I'll try and bring some more map videos. Um, if I can get a recording, my, my recording process has been a little screwy the past couple of days. But if I can get a recording of the ancient map location, I will. That one was hard for me to find. And eventually. Uh, one of the forum members pointed out where it was, um, how they were able to find it, but it's, it, you'll see when I post a video, or, you know, someone might beat me to it, either way I'll, I'll post a video, but it is in Act 5, when you're going to fight the worker's secrets, it's inside the Ark, um, on the wall, there's a, there's a part of that, there's that little symbol that you see in the map, but anyway, that is beside the point of this video. But that's where you find the ancient pride. It's a, it's a rare prize, though. Spoiler alert. It's nothing cool. I've been very, 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 one more very, actually, disappointed in the maps. <clears throat> Especially the map you get from the dragon. They built the dragon up so much, and then you finally beat her, and all you get is a plus uh, 500 fire gem. Like, I don't know. It didn't seem worth it. If it was like a Dragoo weapon or something, it would have been better. Um, but that's okay. I, I can't complain too much because we have Infinity Blade the 3 on our eye devices. So I should just be happy, right? But I'm not always happy. And Cher annoys me. And don't even get me started on the battleship system. Holy crap. I'll make a video about that soon. Right now, it feels like a freemium game that I paid seven dollars for so hopefully when clash mobs start going here uh, battle ships will be easier to come by but man they i feel like they gouge you on those right now anyway so heading into the courtyard where you'll see the statue of the dragon in the middle of the courtyard if you guys have not seen my video on how to beat the dragon in the final encounter and the prize that she drops, that egg, there's that egg there in the middle that's, that's shining, that's where you find the prize from the Ash and Sorrow map. I have a video on my channel, check it out. Uh, check out my video on beating the dragon. She's, she's a real fun boss. Um, I have not yet run into her again since beating her. But Soldier for Good said that he has, and apparently um, you can meet up with her again later. She has not. I've done about 10 Awakenings since beating her. I beat her around Awakening 32 and on Awakening like 42, and I have not run into her again. But apparently, according to the Soldier for Good, you can, so hopefully I'll run into her soon. Um, he said the second time he beat her, he just got like 40,000 which is not a lot. Really, I mean, it's a lot, but... not. I mean, you get that from one of the chests in Act 5, so it's not like it's a huge, huge uh, reward. But anyway, now I'm rambling about the dragon, and there's no dragon in this video. So right now, I'm just going through my inventory, trying to figure out what uh, weapon to use, equipped, so I can continue to gain XP. <clears throat> you want to always try to, of course, have items equipped that are not mastered. That way you'll get XP from them and you can level up. Um, sometimes you'll get to the point in the game where you don't have enough money or whatever to have every single item you're wearing uh, be unmastered. But for the most part, in general, in general you want to try to always have items equipped that are not mastered, so you level up quicker. So we offer this guy a job again, tell him that we're paying with freedom, he doesn't like that idea. <coughs> and he runs away. But it's funny because in the second part of Act 4 when we play as Issa, you'll see where she just says, hey, you want a job? And he's like, sure, sounds good. And 
doesn't question him. He just doesn't like Cyrus. I think he's afraid. He probably heard stories about Alsar. Uh, and so is not real anxious to work with or for him. I don't know. That's my guess on the matter. It doesn't really matter because you don't get to know the NPC players at all. It's not like you ever start to carry about carry. It's not like you ever get to start to care about them. Man, I can't talk today. Uh, they're just there. The blacksmith there to reforge your items. Eves is the potion master, and that guy eventually becomes a gem cutter. They don't serve much in the way of plot, except that you need them so you can. Uh, you need them so you can do all the stuff you need to do, like for, fuse, fuse gems and make potions and shit and stuff. So. Otherwise, they serve really no purpose. As you can see, our castle has been busted up since we unlocked the seal and then got locked in the uh, soul cell. It's really uh, falling into disrepair in just the short uh, two years that Cyrus and Radriar were trapped in the soul cell. But it's kind of cool. I like that they did make it more broken down and it showed the wear and tear and it gave the envi environment since we, you know, spent two years, a lot of us, playing in Saranthia at the Vault of Tears. It's nice that they tried to spruce it up a little by making it a little more run down so it wasn't, it, you know, it didn't look exactly the same. The, in Infinity Blade, that's three. <laughs> Alright, so we have one more Titan to take out, and then we can go down to where the slab is down there, where we ran into the Archivist in Infinity Blade 2. And then we will come We'll be able to fight the final boss of this castle and then get the item that uh, is hidden here that tell tell knows how to retrieve and it's an item that becomes very important in act five when taking on the worker I'm gonna buy a large key here. I'm curious what's in this chest. So I spent all my battleship there for a key, well, practically, and I got a gem. So that was a little, that was a little disappointing, I must say. I expected, I don't know what, but something a little different. <coughs> all right. So now we're down. Uh, by the slab and we can confront the deathless titan that is the boss of this level he throws down his sword he has a weird uh, looking helmet I'm not really sure how he can see out of that he uh, of course knows who we are Everyone knows that we are outside now. Hey, Dad. I'll be the king boss. 
and then we will take on the Titan Melek, the warlord or the warlord of House X, just like uh, Sane was the High Lord of House X or whatever. This guy's the warlord, and I'm pretty sure at one time Alsar. This was his house. He was part of House X. He was the warlord at one time, I believe, and he was. This was his house um, before he went all vile and made enemies of every single other Deathless out there. So that's my theory, for what it's worth. I found heavy weapon. Um, was best to use on this guy. It made the fight pretty easy. He doesn't have any real tricky setbacks that I ran across. Uh, he's a pretty standy, pretty standard dual wielding weapon, um, which is actually funny since the Archivist in Infinity Blade 2 also used dual weapons, and he was the boss that you fought. He was the boss that you fought here uh, in Infinity Blade 2. So just a few more, just a few more uh, break windows, maybe one or two more break windows we should be able to take this guy out. Yeah, I think one more break window and Melek will be dead, so let's go ahead and super this and let him uh, be defeated. And I want to let you guys go with that. Enjoy the rest of the video, the final cutscene. I'll be back for Act 4 with Issa very soon. Hope you guys are enjoying the walkthrough. Until next time, peace.
Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe for great iOS gaming content and to follow me on Twitter.